Welcome to a look at ServiceMate. Today, we're going to be looking inside the very popular tradies app that's been designed especially for people who are doing outdoor service calls or service calls on site away from a desk, but it has a few other little extras as well. I'm Dante St. James. Let's get started and get this underway so you can see the power of ServiceMate for yourself. A quote here from Bruce Lee when it comes to being organized that if you spend too much thinking about a thing, you'll never get it done. And that's the whole purpose of service, mate, is to get work done. Before we get underway, what we're going to look at today is a bit of what service, mate, does, whom it's designed for, some common scenarios that may be quite useful for you to be using service, mate, on. It could be a tour of the system. And we're going to take a tour of the app as well. If I can get my screen sharing to work like I did yesterday with another system, let's hope it actually works. This webinar is brought to you by Business Station and the Australian Small Business Advisory Services Digital Solutions Program presented by the Australian Government. The Regional Development Australia Brisbane presents this in Queensland on behalf of Business Station and in the Northern Territory, Treaty Business Consulting is the partner as well. You're going to be able to view this a little bit later on on YouTube through the Business Station YouTube channel and through my own YouTube channel, which is just my name, Dante St. James. While we're speaking of me, a bit more about me. My education through the Western Sydney University, University of New South Wales, where I've studied marketing, IT and business information systems. My final study was a master's in business information systems. I've done all the levels of certification with the Chartered Institute of Marketing out of the UK, although I did it remotely, not from the UK. And I've worked with TAFE New South Wales to get a whole lot of, I've got a bunch of them on the wall over here of different TAFE uh, courses that I've completed as well, all in the technology and marketing space. Work with Facebook's Blueprint program in Australia as a lead trainer, uh, as well as across New Zealand and the Asia Pacific. I'm also certified as a digital marketing associate, media planning professional, creative strategist, and media buying professional as well. I work with Google's Digital Springboard program. The Australian government program is called Be Connected, ASBAS Digital Solutions, and the New Enterprise Incentive Scheme as well for the Northern Territory. So what is ServiceMate and what exactly does it do? Now, I will preface this by saying that this is not going to be death by PowerPoint today. We're actually going to look, go live and look at some stuff that's actually on screen from both the app and from the actual, um, fr from the, uh, what am I saying, from the web interface as well. So you're going to have plenty of chances to view what ServiceMate looks like under the hood. So we're not just doing something which is just a, a plain and simple, you know, death by PowerPoint. Because like, who basically wants to do that these days? We want to learn and we want to learn well. And I'm just going to set up the um, screen sharing. I keep having the rig start. It doesn't like to hold it for very long. So what it actually does is helps you manage the jobs that are coming into your small business, particularly if you're a contractor or work in the trade sector. It also handles quoting and invoicing on site, which means that you don't have to go back to the office in order to do up a quote. You can do it on an iPad, a laptop, an iPhone as well, and you can invoice on site. And this is really important because it helps you to get paid a whole lot quicker. You can capture signatures. You can record notes. You can record photos and videos from the job, which is really useful for all the records you're going to keep inside your business, particularly because you're trying to do it so that you can provide proof of work done. You can do uh, photos of maintenance issues that may have to go back to base, or you may even be stuck with the idea of trying to make sure that you've got enough um, you know, work in the pipeline that you've got photos and videos of. And of course, recording notes is really important because if you're doing maintenance work where you're going to come back here and there from lots of different um, lots of different jobs and lots of different times, then you're going to have to have those things completely noted and noted well. And keeping yourself very busy on there too to make sure that everybody who else who works on the project with you through your business or through that maintenance or on that particular job, they've got all the information they need just in the notes, the photos and the videos. You can accept uh, signatures through PDF forms. So people can fill out forms online or you can even fill out forms online and it goes straight into your system. That's really handy instead of you having to go through 50 different tools and 50 different pieces of software all the time. Just one piece of software will do it all. You can accept credit card payments through its integration with Stripe and PayPal, which is really handy, which means you can accept payment for a job 
right there on site without having to have square readers or PayPal readers or an FPOS machine. Being able to do it directly through the service mate app makes a big difference. And it also it helps you to sync everything in with your favorite accounts package, such as Zero and QuickBooks are the two that come to mind straight away that have got very deep integration. So if you're using any of those, I use zero. Um, it actually really makes the whole process of onboarding and syncing everything with it and going with all of your um, previous jobs and previous invoices and previous customers, they all get brought into the system. So you don't have to manually enter your clients ever again. They're already right there in zero. So they're already right there in ServiceMate as well. Now, the advantages of using a system like ServiceMate, and look, ServiceMate is not the only system out there. It just happens to be the one that I use. It helps you to have better quotes because your quotes are going to be more accurate because they're on the ground right at the time. As you're talking to someone, you can fill out the quote on the phone or an iPad. An iPad, I think, is a really ideal way to do it. Or if you're on a call, you can do it through the web interface and produce a quote that's highly relevant to the conversation you just had so you don't have to be rushing down taking notes or taking it all in your head in that notepad in the brain and going home and forgetting half of the things you wanted to be able to do with that person what it will do is make it so that you are able to not have to retain all that information all you really then have to do is make sure that you uh have written it all down in a quote on the system which you can send straight away imagine the ability to be able to do that you take a brief on the phone and then you can send a quote immediately as soon as that particular call is over so you get off a zoom call you get off a phone call boom you're sending out that quote it's a really really good way to operate and it's going to make you look way more professional than most in fact we've noticed that when we're the first to answer the first to quote we usually get the job almost 90 percent of the time if we're the first to come back and we're instant about it we will get that job it also helps you get work done because you've got all the tasks involved with a particular job able to be listed in this one system. And when you list all those things in the one system, it's what everyone else in your company or in your contract business or your apprentice or the office person, they can read all the stuff that you put in there. So each individual task as it's done can be, um, can be then ticked off. Now you can actually have templates for that sort of thing that help it make it easier. So, sorry for something like I, um, that helps make it a lot easier for someone to be able to get that work marked off step by step. It also allows you to put those steps one in, in order so that anybody can come into the system and see exactly what the next thing is to do. Now, how ServiceMate and systems like it help you to get paid faster is that that whole ability to be able to invoice on the job and quote on the job means the financial process flows so much more quickly, especially when you've got the integration into something like Xero or QuickBooks. Now, when, you, when I get say get paid faster, I mean, you're able to, at the job, take payment for the work. That's really important. Or if someone wants to be invoiced, you invoice them so that they've got the invoice there straight away. You're not waiting until Friday when you do all your invoicing or Sunday afternoon when you like to do all your invoicing. You're doing it right there on the job, right there on site. And that is an exciting change from having to you know, do everything back at the office and make those changes. So if you want to make sure you get paid faster, you're going to make sure you can invoice faster. And that's what this allows you to do. You can do those better looking quotes, those quotes that are more appropriate and more matched. Excuse me, more matched to what you're actually trying to do in your job. It helps you to get the work done. And generally they've got some, um, some really good um, information on the ServiceMate website on how systems like this actually help you to get the job done faster as well. I think it was like 27% faster than what you would if you didn't have a system like it. But the getting paid faster, that's the golden goose for all of us. The ability to be able to get that money in our bank accounts quicker than just you know simply going home and doing invoices and quotes and all that stuff in a way that's going to be, you know, done slowly, usually by other people as well, or for you forgetting what needs to go into it, you're not going to get paid faster and you're not going to get paid more accurately. Now getting started, 
on ServiceMate is all about accessing it via the ServiceMate website. So you can log in there. Now, this is how a lo this is how I do it because I'm based from a an office. So for me, it works to go via the ServiceMate website. But if you are mobile, if you're a tradie, if you're um, a chippy, a sparky, um, if you're doing IT support, then you'll find that the app is your best friend. So it allows you to do a lot of things that you can do right there on the fly and you don't have to think about it. You can post messages to your crew and all that from the app. It's actually really good. We're taking a look at it very shortly to see what it looks like in the wild. Now it's only available on iPad and iPhone. So at the moment, um, if you're accessing by the, by the ServiceMate website, you don't have a problem. You can get on that with any device at all. But if you want to use the app specifically, that is only available on the iPhone or the iPad. Now, unlike Clubhouse, which I previewed yesterday, which was all about um, the ability to be able to um, produce, um, yeah, they're, they're going to be able to produce that app on Android down the track. In this case, the app is only available on iPhone and iPad and has no plans at all to provide an app on Android devices. The other thing to do is choose a pricing plan. And the pricing plans are, look, they're fairly simple. There's four little layers of it. There's a $9 service, which is kind of that entry level for you to kind of have a go at it. It includes some SMS notifications. It includes, you know, a certain amount of jobs per month that you can do. I think it's 25. But as you go to add all those extra things, that's when the price does go up. So at $29 is extra SMS notifications up to 50, um, up to 50 included jobs per month as well. Um, it includes some recurring jobs once you get up to the $79 level. So if you want to have jobs which are like maintenance jobs, which are recurring over a period of time, then the $79 level is going to be you. This is also where stuff like asset management starts to kick in and forms that are embeddable on your website. So you can take bookings for jobs on your website or link it through from things like Facebook or from, you know, your, even your Instagram account, if that's somewhere where you operate. Once you get to the $149 level, you're going past your asset management, past all that into what we call margin billing. And margin billing is where you have um, the ability to be able to do your billing based upon a, a calculation pretty much. So it's not just a matter of you taking a guess and saying, you know, this is how much I'm going to charge. This is how much I'm going to put this job out for. This is how much I'm going to um, just guess an amount as so many uh, people who do in the trades. This is the ability for you to say, this is the cost per hour that I have to cover. These are the materials that I have to cover. Now add a margin on top of that. If that margin is 20, 30, 50, 120%, that's what you can build into the margin billing, which makes your billing so much easier, more predictable. It's going to take that hourly rate that you want to put in. It's going to take the material costs as well, and then whack a margin on top of that for your trouble. So it's making sure that every cost is covered for with margin billing on top. So if you've got what all your costs are prefixed for all your um, inventory, for all your hours, for all your different um, people who are working for you and for your own time, then you'll have a fixed margin that you have to fulfill. That makes it a lot easier, particularly if you're working with accountants. They're very strict about the kind of margins you are supposed to be running. Now, who is ServiceMate primarily designed for? It's primarily designed for tradies. This is where it all came from. So contractors, um, electrical contractors, plumbing contractors, builders, people who work on work sites in construction, people who are providing services that need to be booked in that have an hourly rate, people like on-site support. It's ideal for IT companies that have people who go out to jobs. So they have to be charged out at a certain rate per hour and booked in in a certain way as well. If you book people in through ServiceMate, it goes through to a system and you can allocate that work to ensure that the work actually gets done. Now on that topic, it also works really well in a maintenance space. So if you're doing property maintenance, if you're doing plumbing maintenance, electrical maintenance, IT maintenance, things like that, anything that requires you to be booked in to do support, whether it's on site, in person, or it's done through Zoom calls, doesn't matter how it's carried out. If it's time-based and it's going to be something which is charging time for money, well, then it's really, really designed for that kind of person. So let's look at a few common scenarios. A plumber may be taking bookings through their website, which is linked through from, say, Facebook ads. The Facebook ads go to their website, their website has a basic rundown of who they are and what they do. 
then that particular plumber then can take a booking through an embedded form on their website. Now, this embedded form on their website can contain a number of different fields in it. Um, generally, you can control some of those fields, but there's, there's oh, by and large, there's certain fields which are default and have to occur as part of what you're doing on there. Now, with that, that means that sometimes there's a few too many forms that have to be filled out or, or individual fields that have to be filled out that makes it a little bit maddening for some people. I've had particular people um, working with this system who have been very, very praising of ServiceMate's ability to take those details. And there's some who have just been, you know, I don't get people filling this out. They just call me because they can't be bothered filling out all the fields. That's something you'll have to work with depending on how complex the jobs are that you're running. A plumber may just need someone to explain they've got, you know, some maintenance work needs to be doing they want a new tap put in a, a basic description would probably be enough but if you're working with it it may be very important for you to get down the information about the technology that's in use where the location of that technology is and what access they need to be able to get into accessing that technology as well so you'll find there's going to be lots of little challenges that come up that this kind of system can help you to solve Electricians are much the same. So an electrician may have um, a solar install to do. They want to get that solar install done. There's a set of uh, tasks that need to be done. So that particular booking can be made for someone to call to do an initial assessment, for example. So an initial assessment to see whether this is a particular um, service that that person wants. Once that's happened, it goes in from just being a client and a lead through the process of becoming a, um, a, an actual job that needs to be done. In that job that needs to be done, you can have templated steps that have to be done as part of that installation, that solar job. So that solar job may be go and do a measure. That solar job may be sourcing the panels, sourcing the inverter, sourcing the each individual parts and racks and mounting hooks and all the things that happen on, on a rooftop to install solar panels. I don't know what those things are, but I'm sure I just threw a few words in there that sounded kind of official. So what will happen is that there's a particular schedule of work that has to happen one step at a time. Now you can have all those steps just individually marked out or you can have just in groups. So the group could be um, to order the contractors to do the install, to go to the, go to the um, warehouse and get their materials, give them, drop the materials to the contractors who are doing the install, install done, install follow-up and then connection to grid. So then you've got all those ability that all that ability to be able to go, yes, I can I can line out those job tasks individually, or with those job tasks, I can stretch them out and make them a lot bigger so that I've got individual things, or I can bring them all back into clumps of you know jobs such as pre-work, work, follow-up, next stage. You're gonna make it very, very short or very, very long tasks. In IT support, this is probably one of the areas which is um, probably an unintended consequence of this system, but it's actually very, very good for this. When you've got techs who have to go to offices and go to places and actually do some support, this is where any sort of system that helps you to, to lay work out and to book work in is really helpful. So for instance, I deal with quite, uh, uh, quite heavily a, um, a group in Darwin called We Fix IT. Now, WeFix IT is a company that uses ServiceMate primarily to schedule their work. They're also ServiceMate professionals and partners, so they can show you a lot more about how using ServiceMate can be of a great, um, a great advantage to you. Now, with the using of ServiceMate, you've got the ability to be able to um, take the job and the details in it with quite a bit of detail in the embeddable form, which is located at WeFix IT's website. Once that goes in, it goes in as a job that's picked up by reception and reception then, then allocate that work to somebody. Now that might require a call just to confirm when someone's coming out, or it may require a call to uh, confirm some more details about the problem that's happening to see whether it can done be over the phone through team viewer or zoom, or whether someone actually has to come out on site to fix the problem. Now, this is where you can put in a series of steps. So the first step could be call and diagnose and confirm. The next step could be fixed and, and closed, or the next step could be something like book tech to visit site. And then you can see things like the availability of your techs because they're all in there. If you've got a team of say 15 people who work in the office, in the workshop and out on site as well, you can track the work that's being allocated to all those people through here. So if you've got 
10 techs, let's just say, um, who are out on site today, you can see what jobs they are at, what their availability is, and you'll be able to say, actually, there's a two hour gap for that tech number three between 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. What I'm gonna do is book them into a 3 p.m. slot because I know they're available. Now, because your techs are also connected through the ServiceMate app on their phones, they're able to confirm whether they've checked in a job is done and confirm that they've received um, instructions to take on another job. It comes up on their calendar, comes up on their job list in their schedule, and then they're able to, through a calendar or a list, see what the jobs are that they've got to do and open them up and get the details of them on their app. A really, really convenient way to keep people in their jobs and, and working through the day and communicated with one of the other things it does allow you to do is to post messages. So for instance, if you've got three techs out in the road, who are all experiencing NBN outages and head office has just found out that there's a massive NBN outage in that particular city, then they're able to communicate that through to all their techs through the phone and it gives them a notification to say, here's information that you may actually need to know. For digital support, so this is a part of my business, which um, I have a lot of trouble getting to is after sales support. So I'm very good at getting the initial stuff done, not so great at getting the after support done. So with my team of people, I've got a digital support process we're putting in place with ServiceMate that will allow us to be able to carry out the kind of task we need to carry out in order to get the job done. So what will happen is when our customers um, go into uh, from the building of their website to the maintenance of their website, they'll put in a request, hopefully through our website, they'll go in through ServiceMate. Now, once they do that, they'll be able to go and then have that job booked in. I will allocate workers to it, whether it's myself or one of my other partners to be able to do that. And then they'll be able to get that work done. We'll be able to mic it off, put the details in there. And I guess if we had the bigger version, we've got the $29 version at the moment, but if we had the $149 version, we then got a knowledge base in there, which actually has those solutions that we might have had to a specific problem. We put them in a knowledge base so that the first port of call when we get a job come in is that we look at the knowledge base, see if there's an easy fix we can do over the phone or, or whether it requires us in person and it cuts down the diagnosis time a whole lot more. Cleaners are our common use scenario next and a cleaner could use this for receiving a job to come in there to making the call to confirm that job and, and actually quote it out properly. That quote can then be sent to someone instantly so that that quote is then marked against other quotes. Now, if you're able to do that quickly from the office or from the phone, it makes it a lot easier for someone to get an answer they need really quickly and also easy for them to engage you to go and complete that job. So cleaners can make really good use of this because then if you've got a team of cleaners on the road, you can allocate them and say this particular job requires two people for two hours each, a total of four hours. You can cost that out. If you're using margin billing, which is a way of saying it's going to cost me, you know, uh, $60 an hour for each of these people. So over two hours, $120 an hour, that's $240 an hour to be able to do that clean um, with two people on the job. Then I've got to make sure I, I build that out and then give myself a margin as well. So that margin is 30%. Then you add that to 40 is 24 times three is uh, 48. No, 24 times three is uh, 24 is 48 um 62 i probably got that wrong but i'm gonna say 62 um my my online my my arithmetic when i'm just working um just from off the top of my head is not great so that's why i'm a digital guy and not a mathematician um in that case then they would add on that 30 percent on top so it's going to be 62 uh, on top of the 240 dollars so it makes you sure that the home base gets that margin on top of everything it gets done as well to support home base as well in the case of consultants, of which I am one, I am planning to using uh, ServiceMate to help me handle that as well. Helps me to book in my consultation calls. At the moment, that's all done through my Google Calendar. The beautiful thing is that ServiceMate does integrate with calendars, so it allows you to be able to see what availability there is and when. Now, I might not use uh, ServiceMate as my process for booking people in. I might just use it for, for booking in the jobs to be done. But if I'm booking in same jobs such as um, getting, let's say, uh, uh, so booking in a, a an in-person call or a phone call or a Zoom call or a webinar to a particular client that I'm working with, that can be done very well in there. But I might want to use the initial booking coming through a Calendly form or Timely or another system that I've got built in. 
the moment I've got a couple of websites with different uh, systems that tie into my availability on Google Drive, uh, Google Calendar. Likewise, your ServiceMate can do the same. It's able to then make you be tied into an availability that's on your Google Calendar, and that can then be tied into the calendar that's present on ServiceMate. So availability is not just what's on ServiceMate, it's also what's going to be on your calendar, whether that's Outlook or it's Google as well. So we're gonna take a look inside the ServiceMate web interface now to give you an idea of what exactly you can do. So let me stop the sharing of that screen. Hi, I'm back again, and I'll bring up the um, particular interface we're looking at. So ServiceMate, make that go full. Let's share the screen again, and let's get underway. So this is what ServiceMate looks like when you first log into it. It's a fairly, um, it's not the most exciting of interfaces, but it's very, very simple and very, very simple to follow through to where you need to go. We'll start at the top and we're looking at the dispatch board. The dispatch board is what's going on in your business right now. So I tap on that. I've got um, myself and it shows all your different staff and where they're at. So at the moment, it's around about 10.30 in the morning in Darwin where I am. So I can see where I am. Now, if I want to add in my, my team in here, I can add them in as well. I can add in a different staff member. So by adding in a staff member or adjusting what am I am doing, I can then go and send a message to that particular staff member through SMS. I can locate where they are based on the location of their app if they're using the app and accessing everything through that. I can also send them an invite to the app if they haven't actually installed it, which is a very handy way of ensuring that people are all on the same page. If I had all my staff included in here, they will be listed down this list. So as many staff, I'll be able to see where they are at different times of the day and what they're doing. I don't have anything scheduled for myself in here. Now, if you're someone who reads calendars more than you read lists, then you could pop into the calendar and that will show you what is on for this particular day. So you'll see at 10 a.m., I can put a new booking in right here. So I can straight away put a booking in for myself or sync it in with my Google Calendar, which I am yet to do. The other thing you can do is look at a list of tasks. So here's a bunch of tasks that I've got that are due. So for instance, on the third of, uh, sorry, the 10th, the third of the third, so tomorrow, I've got to choose 10 pages to base landing pages on for a particular client. On the first of the third, I was getting access to the website backend. That's now being done. So if I go down here and I modify the job, so the job contains all those tasks that are on the left. I go down to the task I'm looking for. The first one was getting access to the website backend. That's been completed. So I've ticked that one off. That one's now done and it's marked as complete in the tasks to be done. Now, the unfortunate thing is it doesn't list these in order when they're going to be done, but it does do it when I've entered them in as a particular list of tasks. So if I go in here again and I want to look at that job down here from bottom to top is the tasks in order of what I wanted them to be. So I've already put all that in and I've made it so it's very clear those are the tasks that I want to have set up in there. Now, the second thing you'll notice when I open up these is I've got a description that I've put in, which I've taken from the quote that I originally did in another system. If I had done that quote in uh, Zero or in QuickBooks, that quote information will be in embedded, will be um brought across from that particular system to operate in here. I can also see the details of the client and I can see whether I've done quoting and invoicing. I've already done a quote. What I would do here, if I wanted to add an invoice, I would add in the material or service. I have a list of all the things that have come across from my particular um, accounting system, which is Zoom, a zero and zero. I can choose these things. So if I was doing a ASBAS one-to-one -one consultation with them, I would go this or a one-to-one -one consultation. I put that in the pricing that's there and I can then produce an invoice. So it's already put the GST amount in there. I can then produce an invoice, which allows me to then work with zero to send that invoice out. Now tax rate will change because it needs to be GST on income, which is gonna make sure it adds the right amount. So at the moment it's just 180, but that needs to be 180 plus GST, not 180 with GST. So tax inclusive amounts are not true. They're actually tax exclusive which then means the 163.64, if it's tax inclusive, then I'd add that on top. So I'm just going to make sure I've got all my pricing right in zero in order that shows really well in here. From this interface too, I can email the client. So I'll send them an e a message and I've got my um, particular email template in here and I can change those, those templates for thing, you know, things like payment overdue, standard invoicing, standard quotes, um, I can change those and make them look a little bit better. So for instance, here is 
you know, the estimate one, it's already got some information in there. And then I can change my logo at the moment. It's way too big. So I might want to make that a little bit smaller. I can attach a file. If I want to attach um, some documents or some schematics, a blueprint, anything like that, that can be attached to the email and sent. And I can either send to the person who is the um, particular client I'm working with or their billing contacts. If they've got an accountant's accounts department or they've got an accountant that, or a bookkeeper who does their payments of invoices for them, I can send it to them as well. As we're moving through here, we also see SMS. I can send an SMS to this particular client. Now, SMSs are marked as being from ServiceMate, not being from you. So it's um, not gonna be branded until you get up to the $149 level where you can actually make sure you've got your particular business showing up as the sender of the SMS rather than ServiceMate. Now in here, I can type in my message of, of whatever I want it to be. I've also got templates that are also on here. So I can say that parts have been ordered and you'll be contacted by an installer. I can say that there's an SMS invoice. Here you go. Here's a link through to the invoice so they can go and actually look at it. It could be a quote. So please find your quote attached. So this is really handy because you can send a quote straight away via SMS. It makes it very much easier. And because people open up um, SMSs at around about 98% of the time, as opposed to emails, which is only about 22% of the time, you're a lot more sure of getting that message through to your client. I can also outline my tasks for this particular job. So remember I had a bunch of tasks back in the job details. All my tasks are here on the side where I can mark them off as complete. I can't adjust those tasks, but what I can do is add other tasks in. So I've added a new task, which is um, now so far I've got down there what? Instructional session three. What I'm gonna add in is another task for instructional session four. Um, the due date for that one. So the previous due date I had as being uh, sometime in April, I think it was. So I'll change this one out to May. Let's just say May the 6th. And I'll assign it to a particular task to a particular person. That one's going to be for me. So it goes in my list of things to do, which shows in my home screen. I can save that out or continue going down through the other things. I can take payment for this job. So for instance, if I want to take a payment of $180 for this job in cash, I can, and it marks it off and adds it to my zero, which means my account system is up to date, really important. Although I might take this as EFT and I can say, okay, this is going to be, this was paid by them by OSCO or by, um, by pay ID through the bank account straight away. So it's an instant payment. Then I don't have to worry about then having to reconcile it because this information will be sent straight across to zero and marked off. And if you're using something like Receipt Bank, um, then it's able to match that up as well. I can look at the schedule and see what the schedule of getting these particular things done are. So on Tuesday, March the 2nd at 11 a.m., I had a particular job to do with them at 11 a.m. As I go through the calendar, through the day, I can see that there's particular things I had to do. Now that's on Tuesday the 2nd, that's today. On Tuesday the 2nd, I also have another task at 12, another task, at one so I can see what all the different tasks are and what time I've actually laid them out for me until I get to Wednesday the third and I'll see there's another job that'll be done in there. So I can save, I can make these bookings in here or I can link through another article. So if I want to do a booking link, I can make that booking link and send them a list, a link that says, hey, you want to book me in at this time? Here's where to do it. And I'll put that in there so they can make a booking and it goes directly into your system. And finally, you can print anything off if you want to print off a work order, a quote, or an invoice. You can do all that from here as well. So I'm just going to close back out of there. Definitely not going to save. Oh, yeah, I'm going to save it. Let's save first. Got to be a good thing. I've added on that extra task, so I want it to show on there. Now, the other thing I can do is look at a dispatch map. So if I really want to tell if I need to go out and see this particular client on Gorge Road in Catherine, I can see that there's a particular area I have to go to. It's showing, I don't know, that's why it's showing home as being in, in, in Palmerston. I'm definitely not in Palmerston, the NT, but it will show me if I want to go down the road to that other job, I can see where it is the long way from where I'm going. Oops, I've gone a bit too, too local. So it's gone, okay. There's home, for instance, as being there. I can set my home as being a different address. Now it's gone down. This is where the work is. So because it wasn't locally to where I was, so let's just say I'm in Darwin and I'm, you know, I actually live over here in Darwin City. 
um, it will show me then the distance between where I've got to go for this particular job. So I get an idea of just how difficult that's going to be. So let's go down here. We're going all the way down to Catherine, about a three hour drive. And then outside of the town of Catherine is Lansdowne, which is where the place I'll be going to for this particular job. If that was a job I was actually going to go to in person, which I am doing on the 19th of March, actually. So then that gives you an idea of where you've got to go and what you've got to do and where your jobs are. So you can then see on a map and get an idea in your head of, you know, just how much hassle that may be involved in that particular job. Now in amongst here, I can see where there's parts on order. So if I've got particular parts on order, I can search for those, search for the job for that's got that kind of status, or I can just add a new job. So if I want to add a new job, it opens up this very familiar interface that you've seen before, which allows you to add that new customer. So I'll start adding in a customer. Um, I'm going to add in maybe my own name. So it's going to go Dante. It's a new person. Is it a, something that's already been there? No, maybe Michael. So I go, that's my, um, maybe Mick Fairfield who owns it. That's actually a job I've actually got to do. So the job status is to send a quote um, for a job category of standard. The address is, well, it doesn't really have to go anything, but I'm going to say uh, Hibiscus Shopping Town. Uh, it's not going to show on there, but let's just say uh, Leania Drive, Leania Northern Territory. The description is domain and hosting renewal for this client. So this is going to remind me to actually do this tomorrow. The contact is Michael Fairfield. And then I can add in his details such as email, phone. So I think it's info at territorybutchers.com. And then I can add a separate billing contact if I like. I'm going to save that in there. So I've got a job now saved in there. I can go back to my job history. Job history is a board of different things. I can open that job and add more details at any point that I want to. So if I want to quote him and say, I'm going to add in web hosting. So it goes, okay, fast comment web hosting for 12 months, $121. I'm going to put that in there. So that's how much it needs to be charged at. If I add another one, which is domain name. So I don't have a domain name one in there. So I can go domain name um, 12 months. And I can enter in the details. Domain name booked with crazy domains for 12 months. I can charge that then in at one quantity at $50 a year. So it then goes in there happily and it calculates what I've got to charge at $171, including GST. I can then produce an invoice, which I can then send to him and then take that through the process. So this allows me to do it all in one place. Now what I can do is set myself a couple of tasks, which is important. Rather than just sending an invoice, I need to then go send invoice as a task. Enter the due date as today, because I'm going to do it today, assigned to me. And then I'm going to set myself another task, which is follow up um, this job, this uh, invoice being paid. So enter the due date as Tuesday next week, assigned to me. Then I might want to just for good measure, go confirm website and domain are fine in a couple of weeks time as a good set of follow-ups. So on the 16th assigned to me, boom, I've been setting myself up a whole bunch of work in there. I can then set myself the payment. I can take the payment if I want to, if, say if I get him on the phone, I can do the payment processing in here, schedule it for different times of the day. So Tuesday, 2nd of March, that's given me an idea at 11 AM. I could do that. I'm obviously not. I don't want to set it in then. I want to set it in on the schedule that I've set in that particular set of tasks, which I'm not seeing a new one. And I can print off whatever I need. So I'm going to save that in place. And now that becomes part of my dispatch board. If I wanted to do a dispatch, I need to send them off somewhere. But in these cases, both of these jobs do not need to have a person out on site to go and visit. Now I can also look at my list of clients and this is where I've, in, uh, I've got like, you know, 753 client lines in here. This has all been imported from my zero 
account system. So I didn't sit there and enter all 753 clients and all their details. As you see, not all of them have details. Some of them are even companies, not particularly people. Um, in this case, what they will be is that their client records that have come over directly from my zero installation. So in, in zero, I've got everyone I've ever you know, paid a receipt to, paid, paid an invoice to, or invoiced out to have something paid to me. So it brings all that stuff back into this particular system. So I can open up, let's just say, um, uh, Sylvia won't mind if I open up her record, it shows me her details that I've already got from that system. So it's mainly the, the ability to be able to see the email address, because most of this is going to be done through email. I can see, I can then fill out anything extra and see any jobs that exist for this client. So let's, for instance, say I want to look up a particular client that I just did some work for. So it'd be Mick Fairfield. So Michael Fairfield right here, open the client. It will show me the billing details, which I haven't put perfectly in because I didn't save them. Um, admin at territorybutchers.com. You can save that detail. So he's in there. When I open that again, it's all in there the way I want it to be. And then I can look at the fact that I've got jobs. There you go. Job number two is set up for there to do a quote. So it shows me the customer's details, the billing details, but most importantly, the jobs that are currently active for them. So I can see at a very quick glance, if someone calls me, look up the client's name, go, oh yes, I see we've got a job open with you. Here's the details and the tasks of when they're meant to be completed by. So that's a really smart way of being able to track exactly what's going on with that particular client. Let's close back up. Now, if we go to invoicing, this is really just a record of the invoices that we have done, the invoices that are going on. You cannot create an invoice from this particular page. Your invoices will be created from your jobs. So if you go on the jobs here and I open this one, I create an invoice or a um, task in here or an email uh, through here. So the invoicing all happens through quotes and invoicing. I then do all this and produce an invoice through here. Once I've done that, this goes in the list that appears on the invoicing tab. So you don't, again, this is just a diagnostic field or a field where you actually look at what's in the process of, you know, all of them, what things are awaiting approval, what things are awaiting payment. There's, um, you know, there's ex the things that connect you through you know, receiving payment. You can take payment for a particular job or you can post that invoice out via physical mail as opposed to just sending it out by an email. And they'll show you then the ones that have been paid as well. Now, I don't have any invoices through here. We haven't con connected everything over yet from zero. We're still in the process of doing that. But once it is in there, it's going to make life so much easier to manage those maintenance work and those support jobs as they come up as well. Your reports really just give you an idea of what your revenue is being collected. So if you're doing all your invoicing and quoting through here, you get at a very, very, um, very quick glance, you can see what the revenue that should be coming to your business is, the jobs you completed, the average value of a job, which is really, really good if you want to plan for the future, um, how many quotes you win. So what's your percentage? You want that to be as close to 100 as you can get in, but that's not always going to happen. The first time fix rate is where you actually get a job that requires fixing, it's completed, and it doesn't have to be reopened open and redone. So that's really important for you to see whether you need to revisit jobs and whether you're wasting money, particularly when you've got free support afterwards, uh, you're not wasting time and money by fixing things not the first time. Then you can see how many days roughly to payment. So how long it takes people to pay you. That's really important as well, because it's an indication of how long it takes your clients to pay, which directly impacts your cash flow. So you're going to want to know that information. You can look at what your top clients are, for instance, and they'll see you know, who the clients are that do the best by you. And you can also see your timesheet. So if you want to see who's working the most or who's working the least or who seems to be getting all the jobs, then you can view all that sort of diagnostic stuff about your particular business business through these categories on the left. So you can look at, you know, what the job backlog is, what jobs still yet to be done. Look at the categories of jobs, look at back in a month to say, what was January like? I want to see what January is like. So you can see patterns over a period of time. This is what systems like this are really good for. They're really good at you being able to look at patterns that appear over a period of time. Now what I'm going to do is take a quick look inside the app. So I'm just going to swap back to our other screen, which is right here and present. So we're going to take a look inside the service made app. What I've got to quickly do is connect it 
through uh, my phone to mirror on the screen so you can see what's going on. This does take a couple of moments to get done, but I bet you're already starting to see a bunch of ways that you can really use this well, ways that you could, you know, perhaps use ServiceMate to manage your workflow and also to make your invoicing and your quoting flow that much easier, so much easier to do. Um, that's probably what um, ServiceMate is particularly good at. It's particularly good at you being able to manage what's going on in your business and show what exactly is happening. So what I'm going to do is share this particular screen, which is my mobile phone. As I flog through here, I can then open up different apps. So you can see straight away on that screen, I can open up the ServiceMate app and it opens up my activity feed in that app. And within the activity feed, I can see, you know, a bunch of videos because I'm fairly new to ServiceMate on this particular account. Um, it's giving me a lot of instructional videos that I can watch while I'm out on the road. Now I can post a message, which is posted particularly to a person or to this activity feed, which then goes out to others in my organization. I can go, hi guys, uh, take care on the roads, uh, roads while in all this rain. So I can put a reminder out there to say, hey guys, make sure you're very mindful of this. Hopefully they're not reading these messages while they've been driving, but that will appear in their activity feeds and they'll be able to see it as well. I also see my job list. So I've got no jobs particularly scheduled for today, but I can look at a calendar and go down until I can see when those jobs are actually scheduled for me. So that one's not in there. It can also show me a map of where, this is the map of where I am right now. And I can look at that as a, you know, where I am and where I'm meant to be. So I can see how far it is to get to those particular places. Back to my activity screen. I can then also look at my notifications. If there was any on there, go through and look at invoicing. So I can see if there's invoices of waiting approval that I need to send out or invoices that are waiting payment that I need to chase up. So I can be on the road or on site and actually see what the status of is of my business. I can look at the tasks I've set for myself. So you can see I've got that set in, send invoice one. So I can open up that job due today. It's for that particular client. Uh, I'll be able to see what that is once I go further in this. I'm going to cancel out of that. So I don't want to mark that off. Um, I can choose 10 base pages to base landing pages on. So I can say, oh yeah, I know what that job is. I can complete that task. So back out of there because I haven't completed that yet. And go through all that and see also the things that have been completed. Remember earlier on, I got access to the website back end and got that all in there. So that one was marked down as done a little bit earlier on. And then I can look through things like the client list. So I can look at my client list, look them up if I want to call them. Let's just say we're going to Aeropool. I can go on there and see their details if they were in there, which in this case they weren't. I can go to someone who is, which was um, the one for ad made, this one right here. So I'll see that Sylvia de Ross is the billing contact and I can go in there and see her email address. Now, if I had a phone number in there, I would also have that in there. I'd be able to measure what her phone number is and then make a call directly from the app as well. And then I can see what my staff are. So I've only got myself and that's all I want to do is have that. Now, if I had the rest of my staff that weren't operating on the app at the moment, I can invite them to use the app. So then I can sort of, you know, they can be tracked. I can be tracking them. They can report in much more easily. They don't have to get in front of a laptop computer every time they want to do something that's on this particular app. So a lot of, a lot of functionality doesn't exist in the app. It's very, very basic stuff. So you've got your messaging, no messages at the moment for me, your jobs, by list and then over and more looking at tasks, which is probably something that I'm going to be doing mostly in an office. But if I wanted to do some of these tasks, such as instructional session number one, and when that is instructional session number one occurs, then that might be something that I'm on the job doing that. In case of, um, I think it's actually uh, instructional session number three is where I'm actually going to be on site in Catherine in the Northern Territory to be able to mark that one off. So I can mark that one off as complete and it'll go down the bottom with the completed tasks like the website backend one down here in the bottom. So the app, very, very simple, not a lot of complexity to it. And then you can see my message came up from me, from Dante saying, hi guys, take care on the roads and all the rain. Um, I can like that, comment on it. And they can check in and say, yeah, yeah, you're all safe because you're back in the office. It creates a little bit of, um, a little bit of, I guess, of a, of a, of a rapport between the people who are working with um, instead of going through social media and keeps it private within your organization. So that the chat that's going back and forward is not going to be happening in a place where it's easy to share that on social as well.
So now you've got an idea of what the app looks like inside. You get that from the App Store. So let's look for it. App Store, I'm going to search for service, mate. Now do be careful. Um, the App Store and the nature of it means that some people are pretending to be others. So they use the service mate colors. Like for instance, these guys are the top jobber. They've used service mates colors to get you confused about you know, who they actually are. We want service mate. And it's here you can flick through all the details to do with this particular app. So it is free one, but you do need an account with ServiceMate to make it actually work and work for you. Um, it's probably very well reviewed, 4.5 out of five, over 440 ratings. So they're doing very well. It's a system the tradies tend to really, really like, and they feel very comfortable with. And then I open up, I've also got that already uh, connected through. Um, then, so I've got everything I really need to operate from there. So thank you. That's about all we have to look at inside the ServiceMate app and the ServiceMate, um, the ServiceMate uh, system on the web. So I've just completely lost my words there. But if I was to look at what my particular experiences so far with ServiceMate are, is there's very good support. So one of the things they will do straight away is they'll give you the option to be able to have a call with a, an authorized ServiceMate rep who's actually within your town. So that call will be in the format of getting you used to what it is, getting you onboarded. And if you find that you need ongoing help with that, then those ServiceMate partners can help you out as well. I've got my particular service mate partner, Luke, who is going to help me with setting all this up. We've got our call base tomorrow morning and he'll be able to take me through all the additional things that I want to do on my particular installation of that. Thank you so much for joining me. I know it takes a bit of time out of your day to go to webinars like this, but as I said before, you can watch this online at YouTube. Just look for my name, Dante St. James or Business Station, and you'll be able to see this particular video a little bit later on. You're all welcome to join with me on Facebook through my Facebook page. Just look for Dante St. James on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, or Google My Business. I'd love to connect with you. Or the easy way is just send me an email, Dante at treaty.com. Au. Thank you so much for spending some time getting out of your business to actually experience more time working on your business. Because after all, we know that you're not going to get it anywhere unless you spend some time working on your business to get it flowing smoothly and just basically making it work better. Thank you very much and have a great week.